In this video, I'm going to show you the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. So the first action I want to show you is to click an item without moving the edit or play cursor. So the project setup here, which sounds like this. And by default, if we select our items, it's going to move the play cursor as well. So now if I hit play, it starts from here. When sometimes we prefer to keep the play cursor where we had it, which is over here. We just want to select our items without moving the play cursor, even though it's useful sometimes. We want to start from here or from over here, but sometimes we don't. We want to keep the play cursor or edit cursor at the beginning or any place we left it, like here. And we just want to select our items without moving that edit or play cursor. And we can change this with a mouse modifier. If we go to our preferences, control P on the PC, command comma on the Mac, it opens up our Reaper preferences. And we could scroll down to the editing behavior to our mouse modifiers, and then find the context for media item and left click. And we can see by default, when we click on media items, it's going to select the item and move the edit cursor. So let's change that. We'll double click it, choose select items, and just choose just select. So now if we hit OK, and then we select our media items, it just selects those items. It doesn't move the edit or play cursor. It'll still start at the beginning or wherever we left it. So we can select these items or multiple items like this, holding control on the PC or command on the Mac, or hold shift to select them all. And it still keeps our edit or play cursor at the beginning or wherever we left it. But there are situations where we still want to move the edit or play cursor. So for that, we can click up here in the ruler, and now it'll play from here. Or from here, or here, or any place we move it. But when we select our items, the play or edit cursor doesn't move. We could also click right above our items, up here. And then it's going to move our right cursor without selecting our items. We can click up here or over here just to move our play or right cursor, but without selecting our items. But if we do select our items, it just selects the items. It doesn't move our edit or play cursor. So we can click in the ruler or right above our items. But we could also choose, which is my personal preference, is the bottom half of our items. If we go back to our preferences and change this from the media item to the media item bottom half. And by default, the bottom half behaves like the top half. But we could change that for each one of our modifiers. So by default, let's change this to select items, but also move the edit cursor, which is what it did by default with the top and bottom halves. But now it's only going to work on the bottom half. So now, if we select our items on the top half, it selects them, but it doesn't move our Reddit cursor. If we want to move the Edit cursor, we can still click in the ruler or above our items, but now we could also click the bottom half of the items. So I can click right here, it selects the item, and it moves the Edit cursor, which is the default behavior from before. Select here or select here. In the bottom half of the item, and it selects the item along with the edit or play cursor. And if we don't want that behavior, just select the top half, and it just selects the item without moving the edit or play cursor. But again, we change this from the default behavior, so if you prefer this way, just change it as we just did. By changing it in the media item left click to just select the item and the bottom half to select the item and move the edit cursor. So then we could select the top to just select the items, or the bottom half to select 
and move the edit cursor. But again, we can still move the edit cursor by itself, by clicking in the ruler or above the media items like this. So the next section I want to show you is to turn off snapping to grid and any distance. Now by default, with our grid and snapping turned on, if we move our items, they're going to snap to our grid. Right now it's set to a full bar, so it's going to snap to each bar, but at any distance. So I can't put it anywhere in between. No matter what, it's going to snap to our grid. If we want to change that, we could right click either of these buttons and go right here and turn off snap to grid at any distance. And if we do that, now we can move our items in between the grid. They're still going to snap if we get close to the grid like this. It almost behaves like a magnet. If you get close, it snaps to the grid, but it's not going to snap at any distance. So we can go in between the two grid lines and snapping is basically off. Now how sensitive that is can be adjusted right here at the snap distance. I have it set to 15 pixels for me. By default, I believe it's set to four. We'll play around with this to find out which setting you prefer. But with this turned off, we can move our items in between the grid and it doesn't snap. Or if we get close to the grid, it snaps like this. But again, by default, this is turned on, so it's going to snap at any distance. Which brings up my next action. Hold on shift to disable snapping. Again, by default, it's going to snap to any distance, but normally to not have it snap, we have to turn off snapping right here. Then we can move it without it snapping to the grid like this. But we could leave this on and it snaps to the grid. We can hold on the shift key to turn snapping off or disable it temporarily. Let go and it's going to snap to the grid. Hold on shift and it doesn't snap. We can put it anywhere we want. So if you prefer to have it snap at any distance, you could leave this on and just use the shift key when you don't want it to snap. It'll snap like this with the grid and snapping turned on. Hold on the shift key and it's disabled. And we could do it on the fly. Let go of the shift key and it snaps again. Hold it down and it doesn't snap anymore. Let go and it does again. So the next action I want to show you is to preview or audition our levels. This will be easier to see if we open up the mixer. And typically, to adjust our volumes, we just grab the fader until we get the level we want. But we could also preview or audition the levels by holding down a modifier. On PC, it's Alt, and on Mac, it's Option. Hold on the modifier, and we can move this fader just to see what level we like. And if we don't like it, just let go, and it goes back to the previous level. Do it with this one, check out the level you like. If you don't like it, let go, and it goes back to the previous setting. And if you do like it, all you have to do is let go of the modifier. Grab it, find the level we like, and if we like it, let go of the modifier before we let go of the fader, and it stays at that level. Although we could still undo it afterwards. And we can even do it after we grab it. So if we don't hold down the modifier, we just grab the level to check it out. As long as we hold on to this fader, we could add in the modifier, then let go, and it jumps back to the previous level. So it's a great way of auditioning or previewing our levels without committing to them. And this will work on any fader or knob in Reaper. It could be our pan. Just move it, hold down the modifier, let go, and it jumps back to the previous setting. And it'll work with multiple tracks as well. If we select all these tracks, hold on the modifier, check out the level. If we don't like it, continue to hold on the modifier and let go, it goes back to the previous setting. Or if we like it, just let go of the modifier, then let go of the fader, and it stays at that level. Or if we grab it without the modifier and we don't like the change, add in the modifier 
and then that go, and it jumps back to the previous setting. Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into multiple parts. Check out part two next. So those are the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.